How many here have designed heating and air systems? 40,000 BTUs is sort of like the low end of the numbers, right? By the way, that's the lowest you can get a high efficiency gas furnace technology from. Most of us have furnace technology, not boiler technology. And if that's the case, what I'd observe is this. All over the United States, whether we're fixing existing homes, US median and smaller, meaning 2,400 square foot and smaller, or we're building new, we're building homes that need less than 40,000 BTUs per hour peak. And we cannot buy equipment if you go to standard furnace technology that's that small and be energy efficient. It's not physically possible to pick up the phone and order one today. So what are we supposed to do? How about this one? Another high efficiency water heater, again sealed combustion. Big burner, not as big as the last case, same small hair handlers. Much, much smaller. This is peak. Now, how many hours a day, for those of you who have heating needs, how many hours a year are you actually at your peak? One to three percent of the heating hours. That's the way you design the systems. It's trivial in terms of total numbers. And so what I'd observe is this. Most of the time is spent at less than peak. But these systems I've just shown you here, their peak is 24,000 BTUs per hour. So they're spending most of their time at what, Bill? They're going to be at five to 10,000 BTUs per hour. You find me a furnace that works well that small. They're not available. Okay. Here's another one. This is out of Canada. Uh, the, uh, the, one of the research labs has been working with a manufacturer to design a fully integrated piece of equipment, uh, including, in this case, an air-to-air -air heat exchanger. If you've gone to the trouble of heating the air and you have to bring in fresh air, which you really need to do as you make tighter and tighter buildings, people need the fresh air, right? Well, why not exchange the heat that was in it, or in some places the cool that was in it, before it leaves? And only boost what's left. That's a pretty good strategy. All right. So here's one, which is air to water heat pump technology. For those of you who live in all electric land. OK? Why not? The idea is pretty straightforward. Have a source to dump the heat called hot water. It's a tank of some form. It's a storage mechanism so that you can put the heat in slowly and take it off as you need it. OK? All right. What are some of the potential benefits? I see one thermal engine instead of two. Now, some of you are in the trades, you'd like to put two pieces of equipment in rather than one, but I'm the homeowner. I'd rather only have to think about one. Uh, new construction was talked about this morning from the builder's point of view. Maybe we can get higher efficiency system from a new construction builder's point of view at the same cost as two pieces of equipment at standard efficiencies today. Consumer's better off, builder can sell it as green, maybe it makes a better bit of sense. The highest efficiency needs to be focused on the largest thermal peak and the largest energy need. In this case, the water heating is bigger. If your home needs 40,000 BTUs per hour to heat it, right, at its peak, it takes 80,000 BTUs per hour to keep up with two gallons per minute in one shower. It's twice as big. But space heating is typically only 20,000 BTUs per hour if your peak is 40,000. And if that's the case, it's just a standard shower is four times as big. It needs to be thought of that way. And if it's the biggest total energy demand, which is true in much of the country, and growingly true in the rest, we ought to be focused on water heating. You can get high efficiency for small space conditioning loads. I can purchase separately air handlers that are designed for the space conditioning. I could have separate zones if I'm doing water-based. I don't care what the delivery system is. That's not the point here at the moment. Much of the country is focused on air conditioning, which is where we're building houses, and it's all over the United States. People expect central air in which case I want systems that are energy efficient at part loads where you spend most of the time in operation. Guess how we don't rate equipment for heating and air? At part load efficiencies. We're in at peak. They spend 10 hours a year at peak. What are they doing the rest of the time? I want to know. And finally, I'm after seal combustion if it's gas for indoor air quality improvements. Okay. What are the potential problems? Here's a few. Sizing. What capacity system do you need if you've got both water and space heating at the same time? 
Could you have a priority switch? Do you need the capacity of stacking? It's not clear, but we know how to build it. We've been doing them for years, and mostly it's never an issue. What size air handlers do you need, given that we've just changed the way the building looks? OK, they've got to be rethought. Will the gas water heaters operate in condensing mode even if you bought a condensing water heater? If you don't bring in cold enough water, guess what doesn't happen? You don't get condensing, therefore the efficiencies aren't as high as you'd expect. How will the efficiency be measured? Guess what? There's no test methods. <laughs> we want to incent it, but there's no method of comparing apples and grapefruit here. You can do boilers, you can do water heaters, you can do furnaces, you can't do combo systems easily. And then finally, which trades are going to do the installation and the maintenance? And does the trade that does the installation understand electronics? Because there's going to be some. Real interesting set of questions. What are some of the markets? I think there's an enormous potential opportunity here. Okay, uh, High performance buildings, new construction and retrofit, there's a major set of markets for that today. And it's growing, not declining. Energy Star for Homes is certainly a program that's interested in this sort of thing because they're incenting more efficient thermal envelopes. They're incenting more efficient equipment. This should be part of that path. Currently, it is not easily there. Green building programs are all over the United States, much of the world. Again, this is the sort of thing we should be taking advantage of. And there's an, an avenue that's not as obvious as low-income weatherization. We spend money, all of us, on both federal and state and, and utility-based programs, all three of those, to focus on fixing up people who are poor, their houses, OK? We spend our dollars in some fashion. By the way, we also pay the residual energy bills, OK, through programs called Li like LIHEAP. I'm interested in getting rid of that bill altogether. Anybody interested? I want to pay for it once, make it go away. Well, as we're making those buildings more thermally efficient, we're also making them better air sealed, tighter. They need ventilation. And their single biggest issue is, what do I do with the atmospheric water heater that's sitting in the basement? It needs to be replaced. And we need to figure out how to do that with high efficiency equipment, because their buildings are smaller on average than the rest, and they really don't need 40,000 BTU furnaces. This is a very, very unique opportunity. So with that, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to open it up to questions. Linda, before we do that with the questions, would you like to say anything about your perspectives on, on what this topic is?